Let's look at gasoline. First off, read this disclaimer carefully and do your good, de good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So here is gasoline RBOB, it's in the natural resources, fossil energy, 110% here from the 52 week low, and so far a minus 4% pullback. Gasoline has become a huge and very, um, you know, salient political topic because there's been such a sharp increase in the price at the pump. And that is, you know, something that especially is going to affect people in the lower economic brackets. Because people who are economically well off uh, will have a much easier, it's much easier for them to, you know, buy uh, the later uh, model, models of electric uh, cars. And they are also more likely to live in areas where the... Uh, electric vehicle charging stations are already pretty well um, established. Hence, yes, this is a, has become a huge political topic, which increases the probability that strings will be pulled to, uh, to temper these uh, price uh, spikes. We did see that uh, RS, RSI and PPO reached pretty obscene levels. Uh, throughout the history of these um, futures, we do see that there are these time cycles. The issue is that the time cycles have been in different, um, you know, durations, uh, and because of that, the, uh, it's it's a bit difficult to to use the time cycle tool. But as you can clearly see, this is one of those commodities you want to buy on a pullback and consider turning potentially even bearish uh, when you have had a pretty sharp and historically rare spike. And that is definitively what we have seen here. Huge, huge move to the upside. We did recently have a breakout above this uh, level, which is a key technical level. If we look at some prior times where we have had a key technical breakout, as an example, you know, like let's draw it in with the arrows. So over here, you had a key technical breakout above this level, but that did, that did not, you know, produce this huge move to the upside. Instead, we did get, you know, a correction. So the most recent time where we had a very key major technical breakout, uh, it did actually eventually turn. Uh, bearish. Hence, the sentiment for gasoline uh, futures, it can change quite drastically. Like here, as an example, over here, we did attempt to have a breakout above this level. When that didn't work out, in this case, we didn't at all get above that price. Uh, the disappointment was very, you know, uh, dramatic. We just had this major pullback. Uh, so yeah, emotions can be strong in this uh, in this uh, space. Uh, it, let's go here to the daily data points. Yeah, so RSI has cooled down a bit here. Yeah, PPO is still at you know a historically elevated uh, level, and the, you know the PPO measures the distance between price and the red two hundred day moving average. So um. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that you, you could also argue that if we do have, you know, a correction, uh, it wouldn't wouldn't necess necessarily be like super dramatic for the bear. Okay, so here I have drawn in uh, a possible future development because you see here you have this uh, head inverse ish head and shoulders pattern. So here is a some kind of a head, a right shoulder, a left shoulder. Uh, prior to that left shoulder, you did have that very major and deep uh, shoulderish uh, formation. If there is going to be the, you know symmetry going forward, we would then expect there to be a correction. Uh, and this entire technical pattern, this entire thing, it wouldn't wouldn't be long term bearish. As such, uh, the bulls could actually uh, be in a position where they 
accept uh, some correction at this point because you have that you know bigger picture uh, and uh, from a more long term perspective it would also be a good idea for the bulls to have you know some cool some cooldown here which reduces RSI and PPL, PPL and other other indicators of course uh, in order to make you know a, a more sustainable move um, into you know uh, the coming years. Okay, but let's explore further. So here is uh, the um, seasonality of uh, the gasoline price over the last five years. August, September, October, no November tend to be weak. The last 10 years, you see that very clear weakening here in the seasonality. August usually has a minus 4% pullback. Uh, then September, October are also weak. If we go even further back, like that, 17 years, then August is actually the weakest month. Uh, September is also pretty weak, and also October uh, has, a mi on average, a minus 5-ish percent uh, pullback. So we are in a weak seasonality for gasoline. Here we have the Finvis, they like to draw these uh, trend lines, and you see here that, that price is getting squeezed. Uh, the futures market uh, is, of course, um, you know, very... Um, it is not for beginners, uh, nor even for intermediate investors. It is definitively very advanced. So you do have this um, exchange traded uh, product alternative called UGA, United States Gasoline Fund. So UGA is the first ETP in the gasoline commodity space. The fund holds near month futures contracts on RBOB gasoline that is for delivery to the New York Harbor. So as an ETF, UGA is structured as a commodities pool, so cap gains are taxed at a blended 60% long-term, 40% short-term rate, regardless of the holding period. The long-term uh, statistical correlation between gasoline uh, futures and the UGA is pretty good. It is at the 96%, uh, which is really strong, and it has a tendency to stay you know, in that higher territory. Looking at you know the short term correlation, it is ninety nine percent. So that is really good. So there's a very tight correlation. So to sum up my take, uh, yeah, I do think that you know there's going to be more and more noise around you know the increase in gasoline price and how it uh, very negatively affects people with uh, you know in the lower economic brackets. And uh, as such, I do think that there's an increased probability of that correction, especially given the seasonality.